Today, we're going to dig into a really important report that lays out, in no uncertain terms, an education system at a crossroads. We're talking about Megalea and a plan that could honestly reshape the future for thousands and thousands of students. Okay, let's get right into it. 124. Just let that number sink in for a second. In 2024, this was the number of schools in Megalea where not a single student passed the Class 10 board exams. Not one. I mean, that's a jaw-dropping figure. It really forces you to ask, how is that even possible? What has gone so fundamentally wrong that over 100 schools can have a 0% pass rate? While the state's new Education Commission report doesn't just ask these tough questions, it gives a brutally honest diagnosis and a pretty radical plan for how to fix it. And that's what we're going to break down in this explainer. So before we can even talk about solutions, we've got to understand just how big the problem is. The report paints this incredibly stark picture of the cracks in the system's foundation, starting with, you know, the actual school buildings. Let's just run through some of these numbers real quick. Get this, 95%. That's how many elementary schools in Meghalaya don't have electricity. 62% of government and government-aided schools, no ramps for students with disabilities. So much for inclusive access. And this one is just wild. Only 3%, three of government schools have functional libraries. We're talking about the absolute basics here. And for most students, they just aren't there. But, you know, the problem goes way beyond physical decay. The whole administrative system is this tangled, confusing web. You've got government schools, deficit schools, ad hoc schools, SSA schools, and as you can see, they all play by different rules for hiring, for service conditions, even for pensions. It creates this massive sense of inequality and just chaos for the teachers who are supposed to be the backbone of the system. And this quote from the report just nails it. It's the perfect way to pivot. Because you can't fix education if you don't focus on the educators. The report really uses this to shift our focus from the buildings and the bureaucracy to the actual people in the classrooms. But how do you actually support those teachers? Well, it all starts with leadership. The report points to this huge flaw. Key administrative posts, the folks who are supposed to be supporting the schools, they get appointed based on how long they've been there, on seniority, not on whether they're actually the best person for the job. So the system is rewarding time served over actual ability. And you can bet that trickles all the way down. But here's where things get interesting. In spite of all these deep systemic issues, change is actually possible. Just look at this. After years of pass rates kind of stuck in the 50s, a special program called CM Impact led to this incredible leap in a single year. It's proof that with focused, targeted intervention, even a system this troubled can see amazing results. Okay, so if a targeted program can work, what does a system-wide fix look like? Let's get into the Commission's blueprint for a complete overhaul, building on that idea. So the report's strategy really stands on three big pillars. First, a total overhaul of that confusing administration we talked about. Second, a pretty radical idea called school consolidation. And third, putting a real focus on empowering teachers. So what is school consolidation? It's not just about closing schools down. It's a strategic plan to merge these tiny, under-resourced schools, the ones that are struggling to even function, into larger, properly equipped educational hubs. And there are a few different ways they could do this. You could create these composite schools that take a kid from class one all the way to class 12. Or you could do a hub and spoke model where one big central school supports smaller schools around it. The goal is always the same though, pool the resources, boost the teaching quality, and give every single student a real shot at success. But the report doesn't stop with schools. The commission knew you can't just fix the first floor and ignore the rest of the building. The problems and the solutions have to go all the way up to colleges and universities. This timeline really tells the story of higher education in Meghalaya. For decades, the state relied almost completely on one central university, Nehu. Then you see this wave of private universities pop up. But it wasn't until 2025, more than 50 years after statehood, that Meghalaya finally got its very first state-owned university. Now, while those private universities did fill a gap, they also created a huge quality control problem. This chart pretty much says it all. The report found that a shocking six out of seven private universities in the state don't have national accreditation, which is a major red flag for quality. And that lack of quality has real consequences for students. The report uncovers a second crisis in higher education. Students are signing up, but a huge number of them aren't actually finishing their degrees. 
and the numbers here are absolutely mind-blowing. At two of the universities shown, MIT and ICFI, the dropout rate was as high as 94%. 94! That's not just a leak in the system, the whole pipeline has burst. It raises some serious questions about academic support, financial stability, and frankly, what promises are being made to these students. So we've seen the deep-rooted problems at every single level, from primary schools that don't even have light bulbs to universities with massive dropout rates. And we've also seen this incredibly ambitious blueprint to fix it all. Which brings us to the one big final question. Megalia now has this detailed, comprehensive roadmap for change. But a plan is one thing. The real challenge is making it happen. Can this vision overcome decades of neglect and all the political hurdles to build a system that finally works for its students? Because really, the future of an entire generation is riding on the answer.